it is true what they say, size is not everything, especially in spa and salon world. I'm Kirsty Sheriff, founder of Pink's Boutique, and a great part of my job is that I get to be in spas and salons, both UK and globally, all the time. And for you, what I want to do today is to talk about the fact that size is not everything, glitz and glam is not everything, and really work through the fundamentals, spa truth, of it being all about therapists and a few tips for you about how you can make sure that you help us professionals, the people that are running these bar and salons, make sure that we are nailing that part of what we do. Like, I have done it, you have done it. Like, everyone has a story of where they've spent a good amount of money on a treatment and came out, well, if I don't even come out, we're just lying there going, are you serious? Um, when you're a therapist, it's very difficult to go and pay for treatments. Like, you just lie there going, <laughs> you either want to know what they're doing so you can copy it, or you're like, yeah, you're not doing that right. So, but as a consumer, you only need to have a few treatments and you suddenly work out, that one was really good, that one was not so good and when it was meant to be, it was meant to be the same. So, this is the base of it. It does not matter how big a spa or salon is. It does not matter how glitz and glam a salon is or a spa is. Like, that's lovely, and without a doubt, that will be part of your experience. But really, fundamentally, when you pay for treatments, the key thing is going to be about the staff and the team and the therapist, the person that physically contacts with your body. Like, don't be fooled by anything else. Now, there is a giant problem to this. When you go online or you ask your friends or you look at a brochure, all you can see is the other stuff. All you can see is the pretty pictures and the swimming pool and the treatment menu and the lovely description. The one bit our industry totally hides from you is how good that therapist is. Like, basically you don't find that out until you're all in and you're on the bed. And that's why it's so annoying because you can come out having the time of your life and you can come out having felt like 60 quid has just gone down the drain. So to date, what everyone does is just complain about it to their friends, to their family, nothing constructive. We need something constructive. If you, I am telling you this because I want you to help me perfect my industry. Like I can't be in every treatment room in the corner. I wish I could. A little fairy Kirsty going, Shh, do that. Do that, push harder. Um, so this is what I want you to do. Next time you have a treatment, when you come out, really constructively, whatever, whichever direction, I would like you to find the spa manager, find the owner, and tell them exactly what you thought of that therapist, whether it was great. So if it was great, really constructively why it was good, if there's anything you'd like them to perfect. And if it wasn't good, or wasn't the same as the treatment you've already received there from another therapist, also list that out. Now, my advice would be to never do this with anger because you don't always get the positive result, but if it isn't as you imagine it should be or you want it to be, find the person this should be most relevant to, i.e. the person that controls the revenue and business in that building and tell them why. This is what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to say absolutely sod all and then go home and just whine about it with your friends and badmouth a business. Like, it is so difficult running a spa and salon because as soon as that door is shut, you cannot control what that person is doing. What you can do is if you get feedback, you can have really constructive individual team meetings or an individual team meeting, probably not an individual. <laughs> You can have really constructive meetings with your staff. You can plan different programs for each therapist on how they need to improve. Just moaning to your friend does nothing of any good. And what you also want to do, if it is a negative constructive feedback, what you should say out loud, and I don't know if they'll all react well to this, but they should do, you should say, it's the first time I've had a treatment here. I didn't like it because of X, Y, Z. I think it needs improved. 
If you would like me to, I am more than happy to have it with somebody else and give you feedback to check whether it is just that therapist. However, leave it with them because let's face it, you're not going to come back otherwise unless someone in that building proves differently to you. So the reason I'm videoing this for you is I want to make sure this doesn't happen and I want to make sure that you can help my fellow spa owners and um, people that run those buildings. So I've told you what I do want you to do, I've told you what I don't want you to do. There's one last don't, a real problem for our industry. And to be honest, if you probably spoke to your friends that had plumbing businesses, anything that's a physical technical skill that lies with the person, we have a huge problem of staff turnover in our industry. It's very quick. People do not stay in a job for very long because you work in a salon, you see yourself doing a massage, 60 minute massage, and between 30 to 60 pounds has gone in the till, and then you do another one, by the end of the day you've done eight, and most therapists it doesn't take very long before they go, ooh, I could make all that money for myself. <laughs> um, what they don't see is how damn difficult it is to run a business, the overheads of that building, what it takes to maintain that staff rate, like, and so many of them leave and go and be mobile. So this is my one last plea. If you want to have brilliant spas and salons to go to, when your therapist secretly tells you they are leaving and going off on their own, please don't go with them. Please stay loyal to the building that's made them great, that's given them all the training, that's given them all the product house knowledge, that's made them a better therapist. I know it's difficult because I started at the beginning, it is about the therapist, but if everyone just keeps doing that, we're just going to keep going around in this little vicious circle and you will never know when you walk into a salon or spa how you're going to nail out the perfect treatment. So spas, I'm going to do another version of these for you where we're going to work out actually how to make the best therapist and those of you that are spa goers, please just send us as many messages as you can things that you've loved from therapists, things you think therapists need to do more. If you had your magic wand, what you would do to the therapists that you pay for treatments, because at the end of the day, this is about spa truth, and I'm fronting up to probably, in our first real episode, what is the number one problem of the spa and salon industry, and it affects us all. So get on it. I love talking to you about it. I know that it's not probably the most positive thing to talk about, but if you want to get the best and you want to get the truth, we've got to start with sometimes the nitty gritty truths, and this is one of them. I'll see you next time on Spa Truth.